Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in the studio. We have Alex Jones on the road. He had to attend a funeral out of town today, and he's joined us by phone. And we were just talking just before the break about what transpired this last week here in Austin. You know, there's been a worldwide terror alert to get people afraid and uh, turning to their government to allow them to just do whatever they wish to us. We had a real memo that was leaked here in Austin talking about a terror threat. And the government responded to it and said, well, that was a real memo, but the threat is not real. And uh, basically uh, saying that it wasn't really a threat. And Alex was just talking about that. Alex, was there anything else you wanted to say about that? Absolutely. And then move on to Elysium. It's just this. I mean, we are catching them in these fake alerts. And my military source, my police source as well, basically said the same thing. They said even if there was a real threat of, say, a bombing that was going to kill five people, you've got a better chance of dying in their computer models on I-35 driving to Dallas and back, oh, like I did today, basically, than I do by being killed by terrorists. So why is our entire way of life changing? I mean, in World War II, we lost hundreds of thousands of people. We didn't get rid of our liberties. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they, in the Civil War, we lost 800,000 or something, 700,000. We didn't get rid of our liberties after that was over. Uh, I guess I mean, they should show ridiculous. They should have showed us pictures of Adolf Hitler and said, uh, okay, now we're going to suspend the Bill of Rights. We're going to take away the Constitution because Hitler is pretty scary. <laughs> Absolutely, folks. Uh, they have dumbed down the public. They've taken the Constitution, Bill of Rights out of schools, and they're replacing it with their anti-human agenda. And now I want to just segue uh, into propaganda. Now, why do I do movie reviews? And why do I talk about things when, when a film has a $400 million dollar uh, you know, budget like Elysium or $350 million. I've seen different numbers. It's because it's on record that most of these movies have an agenda and have a globalist agenda, and you can find out from them what the agenda is. Now, we had a story on DrudgeReport.com uh, Friday because Matt Damon uh, and also the director, the South African director, came out and said it's a conspiracy theory uh you know this is not political this is not for immigration reform and open borders how dare anyone say that well kurt nemo found where a month before they had basically admitted all of this and that this was a social agenda so it also shows their incredible disdain that uh, not just matt damon and the director but also jody foster and others went on tv and made fun of people saying that there was a political agenda in this film. Well, let me tell you what the political agenda is. America is Elysium. That's the analogy. And if America won't take in the giant third world populations of the planet, then you're racist and bad. And I was sitting there with you and my uh, other crew and friends, and my buddy, Shane, looks over and he says, how do you want to, much do you want to bet when this starts that America is Elysium, basically, and that all the bad guys on the space station aren't just white, but they're blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Ladies and gentlemen, every bad guy in the movie is a white person. The only person on the space station that doesn't want to kill innocent people is Indian. And again, my issue is I'm sick of t turning on MSNBC and being told white people are inherently bad. I'm sick of hearing the establishment do this and it's absolutely improper and wrong if somebody made a movie where all the black people were the bad guys and were doing horrible murders and things i would stand against it and i would say that it is incredibly disgusting uh, out of control propaganda and that's just one layer uh, of this film's propaganda i did some reviews kind of haphazardly last friday before i went home uh, i want to do a proper review of every level of this because it is so over the top that, that these people who have bodyguards put out these anti-gun movies, other ones, or these people that have, uh, you know, uh, bodyguards and their kids go to the best armed guard private schools like Matt Damon, but then he's against you being able to have your kids uh, go to a private school. It is so hypocritical. You know, I'll guarantee you if there was some space station with life extension technology off-world, the public isn't going to be told about it in the future. And I'll guarantee you there's going to be rich Chinese, there's going to be rich Germans, there's going to be rich Americans, there's going to be rich Israelis, there's going to be rich Africans, there's going to be rich New World Order. How dare them imply that inequity has to do with white people when I'm sick of the West being bashed, all the things the West has developed, all the literature, all the art, the Magna Carta, the basic freedoms that became the model of the world. Just just because the West has been overrun by globalists and is corrupt now doesn't mean I want to go live 
say in some places in Asia where you get off the plane over there, folks, they karate chop you. The police do when they want you to move along in a line. You can just be disappeared and executed. There's no other country I can go to where they just open up the red carpet like America does. America is the most open society, the American people, the most giving, uh, the, the, the most charity, the most hardworking. I don't care what color you are. And I am sick and tired of Hollywood and the real elite trying to get black, white, Hispanic fighting with each other to distract from the offshore mega banks, the zero, zero, you know, the point zero, 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 two, six or whatever it is. It isn't the 1%. It's the tiny trillionaire class, the people that control trillions are worth hundreds of billions that are leveraged the entire system against the general public who are shutting down our power plants who are paying with taxpayer money to ship General Motors to China that's the new world order that's agenda 21 that's the real threat and I go see this film designed where every white person is the bad guy except for Matt Damon because he sacrifices himself and he's really from Mexico and you know has a you know Hispanic last name and where all the white people are the devil I am sick of it and the globalists want us at each other's throats and it is thoroughly disgusting I want you to have some final comments on this. I know the broadcast is almost over. It's just that I've, I've, I've protested the Ku Klux Klan. I've, I mean, that's all online. People have seen that dozens of times over the years because it's an outrageous group trying to make things about race. And the globalists want to dumb down the debate where everything is about race instead of about real uh, discrimination, offshore banks above the law, tax exempt, stealing $85 billion a month in QE unlimited, uh, the globalists being tax free offshore, the globalists having diplomatic immunity, the globalists having real life extension technologies that they're not allowing to be deployed, uh, the globalists bringing in a cashless society control grid, the idea that transhumanism will empower you and will allow you to be elite. That's how Ray Kurzweil says they're going to sell everybody putting these technologies in themselves when just like a cell phone, it's got bad doors and it's meant to enslave you. Again, I'm not against technology. I'm against who controls the architecture of it. So you see this film that has so many incredible messages, but the bottom line is racially identify that white people are bad, racially come in for socialism and communism and bring down America. It is unbelievable and it's what's pumped 24 hours a day and it is outrageous. It's as bad as Birth of a Nation by E.B. Griffith. I mean, it is unbelievable and I am sick of it and we have our video reviews up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. You can take the show out, David. Great job, and I'll be back live tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, for the weekday transmission. God bless you. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, I got to agree with that. I think it was one of the most obvious pieces of uh, political propaganda I've ever seen. And there's been some pretty ham-fisted stuff that's come out of Hollywood and just out of the movies in general. I mean, it, not even Hollywood. It was the Russians who really got this down to a fine art. Uh, Alex mentioned D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. That, that was something that really made the Ku Klux Klan acceptable, really uh, caused a, a great surge with the Ku Klux Klan. Movies have an effect. The Russians used this as well. You had Sergei Einstein, Eisenstein, who said, uh, who had the uh, strike. It was a, a movie that uh, basically uh, kind of, you know, uh, put forth their political agenda. He also had the battleship Potemkin. There's been this type of thing throughout the history of film. Film is a very effective way at persuading people, at propagandizing people. It gets you not only, not so much on an intellectual basis as on an emotional basis because you get tied in to a particular person. They were very specific, very scientific about how the Russians did that. They even created the Franklin School, which is a way to bring that kind of propaganda to Hollywood. And they did that in Hollywood. There was a very interesting story that just came out in The Hollywood Reporter uh, about a week, two weeks ago, where they were talking about the influence that Hitler had in Hollywood prior to the war. It was a very long time before Hollywood came after the Nazis. And of course, they have vilified them as the archetypal villain, and they should be vilified. But for the longest time, they would handle them with kid gloves. Why? Because they would threaten to boycott the entire studio if there was content in a film that they didn't like. So they had that kind of control, and we see that kind of control still being exercised. The Chinese government came in and caused Red Dawn 2 to have an entire year delay because they had to change the villains from Chinese villains to North Korean villains because the Chinese government didn't like that. The Chinese did exactly the same thing last year that the uh, that Hitler and his uh, propagandists did to Hollywood
back in the 1930s as Hitler was coming to power. There were people who had screenplays, who had stories talking about Hitler's rise to power. Sometimes they did it obliquely. They wouldn't mention him directly. They always do it obliquely. That's what makes Elysium and other films like that so powerful is because they do it as a parable. They do it as a visceral experience. They play on your emotions. Well, that's it for today's show. We're going to be back tomorrow. And uh, stay tuned. Alex Jones Show will be back at noon tomorrow Eastern, 11 Central Time. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.